you talk to your child about it? The first thing to think about is how old is my kid and are they going to hear about it anyway? So if they're going to hear about it anyway or they're over the age of eight, it's an important conversation to know how to have with your child, for sure. Yeah, and can we talk about the ad adults and having to deal with right. the emotional response? Because that really sets the tone and an example for children, well, doesn't it? The first step is to be able to manage our own stress about it because we can't come to our kids and have that conversation if we're a wreck. Then they're going to feel like they need to take care of us. So get the support you need from the adults in your life and think for yourself about in the face of the stressor, since it's unavoidable and mm -hmm. it keeps coming at you, who do I want to be? I have to deal with this, so if I have a stress that's unavoidable, I have to consider what can I do? Do I want to be the kind of person who acknowledges it, offers sympathy, and tries to do something else? Do I want to be the kind of person who gets involved and tries to make the world better in some way for my child and for my family? Do I want to be the kind of person who thinks, okay, I'm going to reach out to people who are important to me and tell them how much I care? Control the things you can control is a really good way to find your own way through the stress. I'm so glad you said that because I've heard from so many people, adults, who said, I just feel numb. I just feel numb. And then you gave them ways that they can deal with that emotion. So so that we can come to our kids and ask. Yeah. Ask them, hey, have you heard about this? Do you have any idea? Do you have any feelings about this or thoughts? So that we enter the conversation at the right place. Mm -hmm. And then we really listen to their answer before we try and flood them with more information. Mm -hmm. Wait for them sometimes, right. depending on the age group, as you, as you Absolutely. said. Absolutely. And, and then you won't have a conversation that's not where they're at. Right, about it. right, right. Are there any warning signs, perhaps? A parent should look for. You know, the CDC's Youth Risk Behavior Survey just came out and said that for the first time, fear of violence or violence is the biggest reason that kids don't want to go to school. Mm. So if you have a child who's trying to stay home or avoid school, you have to consider the possibility that that fear of violence is one of the reasons. And ask them. Ask, hey, tell me more about what's going on. Don't just assume it's because they have a test they don't want to take or something like that. And make sure that if you're really worried about them, you're reaching out to their doctor or to their guidance counselor or their school counselor to get a little bit of extra support for you and for them. But the thing that we can always do yeah. is focus on some sort of purpose. Ask them, hey, is there something we could do together? Or suggest, is there a way that we could make a difference? Maybe not about that issue, but in some positive way to make our corner of the world a little bit better. That teaches kids that they matter, that their actions matter, and they can have positive impact. And mattering improves their mental health. Mm -hmm. It kind of eases their fear. That's it can, way of doing can that. ease their fear. We don't want to tell kids how to feel. We don't want to right, tell them right, not right. to feel. There's nothing to be scared of. It doesn't really help. But if we have empathy for their feelings, ask them how they're doing, and involve them in making a difference, we're giving them the best shot we can of having stronger mental health through some unbelievable stressors. I remember um, as a child, I was watching TV and I saw something that really startled me. Mm -hmm. And we go to New Orleans, which was a big town coming from Mississippi, and we were having lunch and all of a sudden I didn't want to go outside. We were supposed to go shopping. And I remember I was just paralyzed. I was like in the fifth grade or something like that. And my mom stayed with me. My father went out. My father, but I remember my mom just sitting there and just talking to me and helping me. And I was able to then, but you just, you just don't know these different things that, that affect children. You don't know what's happening for them, but you get to ask. And because yeah. you're their adult at home, you get lots of opportunities to show them that you're next to them. You yeah. don't have all the yeah. answers, you don't have to, yeah. but you're next to them and you won't give up on being their person. No, because my mom didn't say anything. She just sat there, but she was there. Can I call you Dr. G? Please. Thank you, Dr. G. Love the, and I know you, we, we called you at the last minute. You come in with your kicks like that. And thank you so much. This is vital so information fun. that we needed to share with everybody. For more resources, information on how to talk to your children in difficult times, go to goodmorningamerica.com or you can scan the QR code on your screen. Now to Ginger, who's in Pacifica.